Hey guys, my name is Attorney Walter of Not the Third. So the Social Security Disability System has changed the way it looks at academia. And the new system that they're using is basically uh, essentially four education categories that are considered as part of the, you know, step five sequential process, figuring out whether or not you can be found disabled. It used to be a different system, but we're just going to go over what it is now. These are the categories for education that matter for Social Security Disability Benefits. Number one, high school education and above. That means basically you got 12th grade, you know, graduated, diploma, and anything above that, okay? The next one basically is limited education. Now, limited education is like your 7th grade to 11th grade. And, uh, you know, what they're looking for there is those individuals who fall into the cognitive abilities of that age group. You could be in a higher grade, but not that cognitive ability. So let's say you're in seventh grade, but you're really learning and doing fifth grade things. You have to take that into account as well, but that's considered the limited education. So the first one was high school education above. Second one is limited education. The third one is marginal education. Marginal education is basically where you have a first grade to sixth grade education, okay? This is mostly you know, people with unskilled work and things like that. And then the final fourth level of education that they're concerned with is the illiteracy category, an inability to read or write. They got rid of inability to communicate in English because there were so many people that were getting onto the system of benefits because they were capable of communicating in another language. And they didn't like that. So they got rid of that in 2020. And basically the reason they got rid of it was that there was a particular group of individuals who were significantly passing people through because they didn't speak English. And because there were a lot of individuals that were capable of speaking Spanish, but still being found disabled, it was sort of unfair to people who could, who came from an English background, considering that there were so many options in the United States where you know Spanish is available. But remember, that's from a Florida perspective where Spanish is everywhere. Like, you know, you go into most stores and you're going to see English and then Spanish. Um, but the thing is, if you go to, like, the state of Washington or you go, well, if you go to, like, North Dakota, you know, there's not a super massive amount of Spanish-based or other language-based support in those areas. So they faced a struggle where they had to make a choice about how they were going to define this whole illiteracy category situation. And they said, you know what? We're taking English out of it. And we're just saying, you have to basically have an inability to read or write. Doesn't matter what language. If you have a language, then you're not in that category. If you can speak it, if you can write it, if you can read it, then you're not into this illiteracy category because you have the capacity to go ahead and communicate in a language. Okay. So let's go through it again. There's the high school education or more. There's the limited education. There's the marginal education and illiteracy. 12th plus, you know, 12th grade plus, uh, 11th grade down to 7th grade, 6th grade down to 1st grade, and then basically unable to, you know, pre-K, kindergarten, like that level or less, okay? These are essentially the new categories that will be used to define whether an individual, uh, you know, falls into a certain age, you know, area. But keep in mind, there's going to be things where they do additional tests outside of traditional education where they prove that you should be in this grade as opposed to that grade. And that could be used as evidence to show that well, you know, albeit he is in eighth grade, he should really be in sixth grade, and therefore he should be part of the uh, marginal education category, which then has to do with the vocational standing as the capabilities of the individual. Because when you have, for example, high school educated and above, you're expecting like semi skill, skilled work pretty much from those individuals all the way across. When they're in the limited education category, you're expecting like, you know, a lot of the work is going to be more in the semi skilled, with some you know, skilled work, you know? Um, and so, you know, that's that's what they're looking at. When you get the marginal education, that one to sixth grade, pretty much all the work's gonna be unskilled. Uh, all the work's gonna be unskilled. And then illiteracy, obviously, maybe, maybe slightest of work, you know, with a shovel or a mop, but beyond that, you're just not gonna see it, all right? So, uh, anyways, guys, I hope this helped you out. These are the new four categories of education as of 2020. My name is Attorney Walter Wilton III with Disability Resolution PA. Remember, if this channel has helped you, please like, subscribe, leave five stars. If you're not sure how, they're in the link below. Also, I donate two hours every week on Thursday, live on YouTube. 
Uh, go ahead and check them out if you get a chance, and we'll go from there. All right, have an absolutely wonderful day, and thanks so much. Bye-bye.